Let us look at question C2. Table C2.1 shows results obtained in an experiment to determine reflective index of paraffin using real and apparent depth. So we have the real depth in centimeter uh, ranging from 4 up to 14 centimeter. Then we have apparent depth uh, in centimeter ranging from 2.8 all the way to 9.80 centimeter. Uh, Roman numeral 1 of question A, draw a graph of real depth against apparent depth using the values in table C2.1. So basically we have uh, the real depth which is, will be y-axis then apparent will be x-axis. So basically we have y then x-axis. So the next thing that we need to understand is to see uh, how these are spread so that to ensure that we um, spread uh, the values equally. So remember the lowest is 4 then the highest is 14. So and they're increasing in the interval of 2, 2. So we can start from 0. Uh, for this one 0, uh, then 2, then 4, then all the way up to 14. Increased by the interval of 2 to ensure that the graph is uh, properly scaled. Then this one we have all the way up to uh, 9.8, then starting from 2.8. So for this one you can also start from 0, then you can increase by a 1 unit. 1, 2, all the way up to uh, 10. Then in that case it's much more easier for us to graph and ensure that the graph comes in uh, properly. So let us move to the graph. So as you see on the right hand side we have the graph which has been uh, properly labeled so make sure that uh, you label appropriately. So the apparent uh, depth which is uh, the x-axis properly labeled and uh, the intervals like we said from uh, 0 all the way up to 10 we feel an increment of one unity equal so that it's properly scaled. Then the y-axis are uh, from 0 all the way up to 16. We feel an increment of 2, which is equally spaced. In this case, it helps us to get uh, the proper uh, shape. Then we need to transfer these data points all the way to the graph. Once we do that, we get the four marks, which is the easiest way to get. So let us start with uh, basically 2.8,4. So uh, the real depth is 4, so 4, we are moving al al along 4 here, then comma, uh, basically 2.8. So 2.8, remember, there are 10 subunits here, so meaning each unit is 0.1. So we have 2.1, then 2.8, just uh, 2 um, points before 3, so it will be somewhere uh, at this point. Then next is a 4.2,6. So we go along 6. Then 4.2 is just a 2 points above 4. So it will be somewhere here. Then next is um, 8,5.6. So 8 along 8. Then 0.56. Uh, so 0.56. So 8.56. Which is just 4 points before uh, 6. Then next is uh, basically uh, 7, 10. So along 10 we go and look for 7. So it will be somewhere here. Then we have uh, 12, 8.4. So along 12 then 8.4. So it will be uh, somewhere here. Then we have uh, 14, 9.8. So along 14 then we go to 9.8 which is just 2 points before 10. So like that. Then once you do that you can uh, basically join these points. So remember they are not starting from 0, so they are starting from somewhere here. So what we do is we join like that. Okay, so you draw it nicely using a ruler. So it will be a straight line like that. So once you draw a graph like that, using a ruler it will be a straight line, then you get the four marks. Let us look at Loma Numero 2. What does the gradient of the line in the graph you plotted in C2 a Loma numeral 1 above represent? So what we have basically is the graph is showing us basically the change. So it will be the change in the 
apparent so we have basically the slope is just uh, basically the change in the uh, little depth over basically uh, apparent which is uh, basically the gradient apparent depth so if you notice here in this case uh, all these points are giving us uh, basically just uh, the ratio which is uh, basically the slope so for example what it will be is basically it will just be a uh, uh, like at this point it will be a uh, 10 divided by 7 okay so these changes so what are the changes these changes are two units they are the same then what are the changes here these changes is uh, 4.2 minus 2.8 is uh, basically 1.4 again 1.4 so they are increasing the same rate so it's basically just the, the these so it will be end up giving us basically uh, the ratio of these two which is new depth over apparent depth which is uh, basically equal to uh, this is uh, the reflective index okay so this will just end up giving us uh, basically the uh, reflective index of uh, two uh, things so this is uh, since uh, basically we are trying to find this so this is uh, end up being the reflective index of paraffin so the ratio of these two the change is giving us the reflective index of paraffin so basically this is uh, the answer to uh, Lomani numero 2 of a then um, Lomani numero 3 using the graph determine the reflective index of paraffin so we just pick two points so you can pick two points like I said so you see here we can just pick two points so if you want it will just be, be remember these are changing by two units so it will be a two then 1.4 so basically the change is if you say basically 4.2 minus 2.8 is 1.4 if you say 9.8 minus uh, 8.4 it will still be 1.4 so these are all so the change on top here it's which is the same as if you pick the lower end is 6 minus 4 over 4.2 minus 2.8 you end up with basically 2 over 1.4 so 2 over 1.4 uh, what you end up is basically uh, 1.43 so 1.43 is basically uh, the reflective index of paraffin 1.43 is the reflective index of paraffin okay let us move to question b so question b let us move to a bigger space where we need more space so b the reflective index of oil is 1.45 and that of water is 1.33 what angle does a ray of right incident to oil at 40 degrees make with water when oil is floating on water so in this case oil is floating on water so the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, basically know the standard uh, reflective index so standard formula for reflective index is basically um, let us say n is a reflective index of water over another n reflective index of paraffin these are uh, must equal to a uh, basically sine okay or well, this is all so sine angle of incidence then a uh, sine angle of refraction so this is a uh, basically the general standard so now this is where uh, the ray of light is coming so when the ray of light is coming from air you notice that a uh, reflective index of air in the vacuum is the same as the vacuum which is one this one becomes uh, one this whole thing becomes one then uh, it drops to the standard uh, simplified uh, formula for reflective index now what we are being told here is uh, we have two media so on top we have oil then this is the normal then the row of right is eating the surface of oil which is a uh, 
floating on water so it's sitting at this and this is does a ray of light incident to oil at 40 degrees so this is uh, the 40 degrees which is the angle of incidence okay so what is we are being to ask to do is to find the angle does a law of light of incident that, that makes so it's the angle of diffraction so it's this angle so now what is happening is basically is uh, oil denser than water so the oil is denser than water as you can see here so now what will happen here in this case is uh, the right the ray of right will uh, diffracted away from the normal so it will bend away from the normal as it enter water because water is less denser so remember this is water then on top oil is floating so this is oil so we are asked to find uh, this angle so this angle is still deflected ray. So this angle should be greater than 40. Remember, this is where the key is. So having known that, so we know that 40 is incident ray. Then we have to find the deflected ray. Then we know these two. So the reflective index of water is 1.33. We start substituting, divide by what is uh, the reflective index of uh, basically uh, oil you see 1.4345 okay then equals to the sign sign of what incident so incident r to oil at so this is 40 degrees then divide by sign r which is the angle of refraction we are looking for so crossing multiplying gives me that 1.33 uh, sine r equals 1.45 multiplied by sine uh, 40 degrees. So uh, we divide by 1.33, then 1.33, then we have basically sine r is equal to uh, this. Then like that. Then, because we are looking for R, so what we can do is we can uh, find the inverse of sine. So, it's R is equal to multiply by the inverse of sine, both sides. So, sine inverse, then 1.45 sine 40 degrees over 1.33. Then, we can use our calculator to simplify that. We end up with R is equal to uh, basically 44489 uh, 8, 9, which is the same as it to one decimal place for the 4.5 as this angle we are being required to find which is the angle of refraction so this angle is 44.5 so that's our answer so basically this is how you get the 10 marks in total on this question Thank you viewers for watching uh, this uh, episode. If you find this video to be helpful, please uh, consider liking and also if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. By liking, subscribing and sharing, you are going to help us improve our visibility. A simple like from you makes a big difference. So once you subscribe to our channel and go to our channel, we discover that we've got uh, so much content. So we've got uh, mathematics still are based on revision questions we've got a physics we've got a chemistry then we've got also topic based uh, section for all the subjects and this is uh, the best uh, section for you if you're having any challenges in uh, any particular topic